you spoke about crazy stories and, and crazy experiences. What was one of the kind of craziest things that happened to you in Thailand? That well, other than that, that probably one where I lost all my money and had to fight again three days later, a bad one. But even I was in the gym once. I'd, what I did was I'd flown. Home, I'd been there for six months. I'd flown home just to see my mum and dad for two weeks, and then flown back to Thailand. So within the two weeks, I'd obviously been on piss with my friends and that. I'd not been training in England or having a rest. I got back to Thailand that first day of training. There was a promoter walking around the gym, and Jitty went, "Oh, I want you to go fight pro boxing in Cambodia." I said, "I've never fought pro boxing." He said, "Oh, it's alright. Just go do it." And I jokingly said, yeah, all right, whatever. And then he came back in the next day and I thought I wasn't going to hear anything about it again. And he started taking photos of me. I said, gee, what's this guy doing? And he said, you're fighting pro boxing. I said, I don't want to fight. I said, I've never fought pro boxing. He said, you punch hard, you'll be OK. I said, gee, I'm not doing it. He said, it's double the money you get for Thai boxing. I went, all right, we'll do it. I said, all right, just this time, one time. So I had to go to Cambodia and I said, OK, to my Thai coach. I said, when, when, what day are we coming? He went, oh, I can't go. I said, what do you mean you can't go? He said. They want to make it look like we've, they've flown you in from England, so you've got to go with another Western person. So I had to go with just one of the other fighters who were training there. We were no coach or anything. My friend Adam, who we went with, and he didn't really know anything about boxing or anything. He didn't know anything about Thai boxing. He would do a jujitsu guy, to be fair. So I went, all right, no worries. So I said, who am I fighting? He, the guy, my Thai trainer said, don't worry, he's rubbish. You'll knock him out. I said, what weight? I said, 65 kilo, I think he told me. And at the time, I were only fighting at 62 kilo. So it were a bit heavy, so I went, all right, no problem. Um, I only had like a week to prepare for the fight, so I wasn't fit either. And then when we flown into Cambodia, they flown me in on a propeller plane. And I was thinking, how do these guys think I've flown on a propeller plane all the way from England if they're trying to make it look like I've come from England? So I turned up and there's all these newspapers. When the plane landed in all these newspapers and TV and everything, I'm thinking, I thought this guy's crap. I thought, we can't be that crap of all the TV here waiting for me. And then I sat in back of this bus and some guy gave me a newspaper. And he opened it up and he had my opponent on the middle page of the newspaper, a big spread, Cambodian number one boxing champion. And I thought, oh my God, I thought I'd been stitched up so bad here. So we went to check the weight. I jumped on the scales and I was 67 and I was told the fighter at 65. So I started putting the, the sweatsuit on and the promoter went, what are you doing? I went, lose two kilo. He went, no, gain two kilos. He said, you're underweight. I said, what do you mean you're underweight? He said, fight 65. He said, no, 69. I thought, oh my God. I thought I was fighting at 62 at the time. I thought I'm going to get absolutely destroyed here. Um, came down to it on the day of the fight and we came out and I'd not really been doing much boxing training. What my Thai coach said to me, he said, you're not fit, so train like you're still fighting Thai boxing and kick the pads and knee because it's harder than just boxing. And I don't know where this logic came from, but I went, all right, whatever. And I got absolutely punched all over for the first round and a half. I brought my nose in the first round and I just had no idea what we were going to do. It was a six round fight. I'm thinking, what am I doing here? And in round two, I dropped him with a left hook and he was out starfished. And I was running around the ring, jumping on the ropes, celebrating and stuff like that. And it must have been about 20 seconds that I was running around for. And I turned around and the ref was still counting, going five, six, like that slow. And I'm thinking, what's going on here? And eventually on eight, he picked him up off the floor and stood him up and then went fight. So I ran back in again. I dropped him again. And then this time his nose was bleeding. So the ref picked him back up again, didn't give him a count, took him over to his corner, gave him a drink of water, wiped his nose and then sent him back out again. And then the bell went and I'm going, oh my God, I thought I'm, there's not a chance I'm going to win this fight here. I dropped him again in round four and then dropped him again in round six and the ref just picked him up off the floor every time and wouldn't stop the fight. So I dropped him like four times altogether. So luckily there were no way they could have like give it against me on points because I'd had four, ten, eight rounds and I won on points. And I just thought I am never, ever going back there to fight again. And then the next week when I got back to Bangkok, they said, oh, we want you to go back. We've got another fight for your boxing. And Jitty went, oh, they're going to give pay you double. I went, don't care. They're not going. I said, you're not sending me to do that ever again. You stitched me right up.